could you do a video on old pseudobulbs and what they should look like when being absorbed? This is a requested video from Orchid Ninja Nina's son, Samurai Nina's son, and goodness me, what a superb topic to cover. Because we have many variables when it comes to orchids absorbing old structures, how they absorb old structures, what is normal versus what could pose a threat. And notice that I said what could pose a threat because a pseudobulb being absorbed at a time of year during which conditions are favorable is not a threat. Then we just let it happen and suddenly changes in the conditions during seasonal changes could result in a different scenario. As in, what happened with the pseudobulb being absorbed posing no threat and here we are with a situation in which rot kicked in and has started spreading. Just a hypothetical example, but it does happen. So thank you Orchid Ninja Nina Sun, great question, let's talk about this. And by the way, I'm going to expand on this just a little bit because we can see things happening to the orchids we already have in our collection. Maybe we have a history with them and know what is going on, but all the examples here will help you understand what you are looking at if you're getting new orchids and are doing your initial inspection be it they came through the mail or while you are in situ shopping for new orchids. The following examples are a great heads up to understanding what you're looking at and helping you make the right decision there and then as you look at the orchid you would like to purchase. Example 1. Let's start with the Dendrobium genus because that is what Nina's son specifically was referring to and while I'm not showing Denfowl pseudobulbs, these examples are what you will see throughout the Dendrobium genus. Any back structure that is being absorbed is not a bad thing for the most part. Unless you are shopping for a new orchid, then I would shy away from purchasing the orchid that shows dried up canes or canes declining, even if they are in the back. Dendrobium canes have a very long lifespan and can be leafless while healthy, still supporting the orchid for many years. But when they get absorbed, they should start looking a little bit yellowy, they should then go dark brown, going dry at the top start to shrivel and if you have not removed the bract then you will see the bract show signs of spotting going black in some parts and possibly sections of the cane going black as well and all this is normal because of the way the cells dry out at a different rate depending on the conditions, be they damp or dry. These are not infections, as long as they are dry. They are not a threat to the orchid, neither are the black spots because what you are seeing is cells dying off. There's nothing to worry about. However, while conditions are warm, and in some cases, while there's a lot of airflow, there is no need to interfere with structures that are declining in the back. Best practice is to let the structure go completely bone dry. Now I know I'm not showing you images of dendrobiums only while showing you examples of what you may be seeing or what you can expect but the visuals are the same no matter what orchid you're looking at as long as the sheaths are still around the cane or the pseudobulb. At any given point in time when an orchid is absorbing a back structure you have to be 100% aware of your weather conditions or grow space during the time that back structures are being absorbed. If you're heading into cooler temperatures and higher humidity signs like these need to be closely monitored so that they do not become a threat to the orchid and turn into an infection that could spread through the rhizome. Even dried sheaths that only had some spotting during warmer temperatures can become a problem when the temperatures drop because they are a great breeding ground for sooty mold which there is a video linked in the description on how you can deal with that as my Dendrobium tortile got it during one winter. And that was on canes that I had stripped clear of the sheaths. So you be mindful of your weather conditions and if they do a switcheroo on you, then what was normal at first and it was fine could pose a threat. The best practice though, and this is what I do with my orchids across the board, is I leave old structures to get absorbed until they are crispy dry. Only then, and time permitting, do I go in and cut or snap off <laughs> those old structures to tidy the look of the orchid. And also so that I do not drop the ball during the colder months of the year and lose track of them being there and eventually they may harbor fungi or bacteria because the material, while once dry, can start absorbing moisture from the air and may pose a problem in the future. Allow me a personal plug before we move on to the next examples. 
I would really appreciate the support of a thumbs up to this video as well as please subscribe to the channel if it is your first time here. Also, if you feel this video is worth a super thanks, know that my orchids and I are grateful for that as well. And while my merch store does not feature anything with dyeing pseudobulbs, there are so many other amazing products featuring orchid blooms for you to enjoy on a daily basis. Thank you so much for everything that you do that supports the channel. The fact that you clicked on this video, I so appreciate that as well. Keeping an eye on the structures that are declining, and hopefully, as is the topic of this video, we're talking about the older structures. While that is good, that is only one sense that we should rely on. Add the sense of touch by giving it a gentle squeeze just to be on the safe side while it declines. Every now and then, go back and make sure that it's okay. Because here is an example where the pseudobulb is being absorbed at the back and it is firm. However, the next little test is to see what happens how it responds at the rhizome because what we may feel as firm is only that way because the outer cuticle is pretty thick and is keeping liquid in. As we check the base of the structure and give it a bit of a wiggle, that is where we can confirm whether the bulb is in actual fact dying back without possibly causing any issues or we can see the cuticle is holding in liquid because of how thick that cuticle is. Now if the pseudobulb is soft to the touch but we do not see any signs of liquid forming then and don't worry, things are normal. But if we see liquid forming and being held back by a thick cuticle, that is when the back bulb has to be removed prematurely. And the sooner the better. And then seal the cut with cinnamon or another antibacterial product that will dry the cut out area very, very quickly. And just to prove a point about not being fooled by a firm pseudobulb, let me show you what happened when I cut into this one. And the first pierce of the knife and the liquid started oozing out and the odor was very unpleasant. So firmness does not always mean we can let the pseudobulb desiccate without intervention. And always remember to sterilize your cutting tools straight away as well. However, there are cases where we are not seeing any issues with the back bulbs. We also have to pay attention to what is going on with the other bulbs that could potentially pose a threat. The targeted treatment of situations like these, where a bacterial infection wants to take hold on an otherwise perfectly fine pseudobulb, is also linked in the description. Now here are some examples that may help you out when you receive new orchids or are shopping for them in C2, especially if you do not know the history of the orchid. Here we have another orchid with dried up back bulbs. Okay, I hope that no outlet sends you an orchid with dried up back bulbs and no nursery actually has an orchid with dried up back bulbs on their benches. But what I want you to look at is the striping along the still green pseudobulb that is the closest to the dried up back bulb. You see the black lines? That is showing the orchid has had scale in her history and they were underneath the sheath that was there at the time. If you see something like this, then you can conclude that pests were once upon a time in the history of this orchid. While there are other reasons like mechanical damage, it is rare for that mechanical damage to only be so superficial. Normally superficial black stripes like these give you a heads up that there was scale present at one point. The next example is a species specific behavior. While it looks like possible sunburn after removal of the sheaths and exposure to light that could have possibly burnt the bulbs, these back structures normally start to change from green to brown and black as they decline. As the declining progresses, they start to collapse. This is normal in the case of Mimicophilas, previously known as Schomburkias. These bulbs have been declining for the past three years and are not posing a threat to the orchid. However, this Myrmecophila has the same kind of growth habit with structures that are always burgundy. Rarely will you see green on them. This is normal as well for this specific species, of course, but what is not normal is the bulbs closest to the growing point turning brown at the stage they are doing so. This is a result of lack of water. The bulbs won't shrivel like the oldest bulbs have, but they are declining due to the lack of hydration. As long as they are firm though, they do not pose a threat and there is no liquid to be seen at the base where they connect to the rhizome. But you can see many orchids that do not get sold quickly or are not as popular as other orchids in a nursery 
will have signs like this because they are in locations where the general public usually doesn't see them and also possibly the watering needs aren't met during the time that the orchid is in the nursery and sometimes we can also see signs like this on orchids that are mounted simply because they are being blocked by other orchids where the misters do not reach doesn't mean the orchid isn't healthy, doesn't mean you can't purchase the orchid, it just means that you could possibly negotiate a discount and the orchid is going to grow well for you and recover beautifully once all her needs are properly met. Now you may also receive an orchid that has dried up seedling bulbs. That is normal and because it is a normal occurrence many nurseries may not cut these off but if this is what you see, get or have happening in your collection there is no problem here at all. And you may see back bulbs yellowing and shriveling. In that case you need to know what your orchid would normally do because some orchids have a natural knack of having shriveled back bulbs that are not under duress at all. It is just part and parcel of their characteristics. Even the yellow in some species is not no cause for alarm. Perparatas are a classic example of the back structures going yellow while still being absolutely fine. But what about the spotting on any dried back bulbs, especially on orchids that are cold tolerant? Remember what I said earlier, higher humidity during cold temperatures, the moisture will get absorbed by dried out structures and then fungi or bacteria can get a hold. Now I usually do a major cleanup of old back bulbs several weeks before my orchids have to come inside. Until then, these dried up structures are not in the way. They don't bother me, they don't bother the orchids. But if you see this, just because they're dry now, it doesn't mean they will stay dry. And I would address pseudobulbs like these as we head into fall. We have to be a little bit more careful when it comes to how much airflow we're giving our orchids. Fans cool off the orchids even further, dropping the temperature, meaning our humidity is higher. You see where I'm coming from? Dried structures doesn't mean there is no threat. Climatic conditions and influences can take a dried structure that was once just there, looking nasty, become nasty and detrimental to the orchid. I hope that makes sense. And of course, if none of this is making sense or I have confused you, please, please address anything in the comments where I can be a lot more specific. Thank you. <laughs> and to add one more example for a genus that we normally don't see often and to complete the request of Nina Sun, let me show you what is normal for the decline of catacetinae orchids. Without the sheaths to hide the coloring of the back bulbs, a normal and healthy decline of a pseudobulb on any catacetinae is a yellowing from the top down. This process can take years, as in the example I'm showing you here. It is possibly going to dry out pretty quick in the next year, but up until then it poses no threat. However, if you have sheaths on your catacetinae pseudobulbs and cannot see what discoloration may or may not be happening beneath them, then what you see is the natural process of the sheaths drying out. The pseudobulb behind it is still green green and healthy, even if it's shriveled, that is nothing to be concerned about. But if you see black staining on the sheaths, just like with the dendrobiums, keep an eye on those when temperatures drop, especially if your orchids are exposed to a lot of rain. Any moisture can trigger fungi and bacteria at any given time. However, with this genus, we can pretty much say across the board, a declining pseudobulb should not go so soft and squishy that liquid starts to form if it is declining in a healthy way. That should trigger all the alarm bells and needs to be dealt with ASAP. But whatever you do, if you're cutting anything off your orchids, just to be on the safe side, try to let the structure dry out completely. Try not to cut into green tissue because what is dried up is dry and cannot be a gateway for the rest of the orchid for possible pathogens to enter and then cause issues. If you cannot wait, do not want to wait, please always sterilize your cutting tools between each cut, even while working on the same orchid and especially between each orchid. Now, if you have any questions about something specific you would like to bring to my attention, then please do not hesitate to use the comments section to your advantage. However, let me tell you, I love hearing from you regardless and hope that this video was helpful. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you, Samurai Nina San, and well, you watching to the end gives me the opportunity to wish you a beautiful day on the condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.